If you're looking to level up the stance of your truck while gaining some better strut performance in the meantime, these Rough Country 2-inch front leveling N3 struts will be a great addition to your 2019 or newer Ram 1500, excluding the TRX model. Now these will be a great pick for the Ram owner who wants more than a strut spacer when it comes to leveling their truck while still keeping it relatively affordable. Now these will raise the front of the truck two inches, which will not only get rid of that excessive factory rake, but it's also going to increase some ground clearance up front and offer more of an aggressive presence to the Ram with its stance. This will also be a great pick to fit up to a 33 inch tire if you're looking for a more aggressive wheel and tire setup and want a reliable leveling kit in order to make that happen. Now when it comes to the struts, these will have a nitrogen charged twin tube design with a large 1 and 3 8 inch bore for responsive dampening while also remaining comfortable for an enjoyable driving experience. These will also have a robust 1.12 inch wide strut body and a hardened chrome steel piston rod for excellent durability, especially if you're taking your truck off road. These will also be fully assembled with the preloaded coil springs, making the install pretty straightforward and hassle free. Like I mentioned, these will be pretty affordable for a strut style leveling kit coming in at roughly $375. Now, comparing these to some other choices in the category, you'll see a large range of spacers that will add the height that you may be looking for, but keep the suspension the same, which may not be up your alley if you're looking for a full upgrade. Now, I again also like the fact that these are fully assembled as where some other options may require assembly and they may reuse some of those stock components. For example, uh, they may be reusing the top hat on the factory strut in order to put it on the new one. And again, this comes fully assembled. Overall, I think if you're looking for an easy and pretty affordable way to get some height and a solid replacement to your front struts and coils, then this is going to be it. Now, install will be three out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter, taking you about three hours to get the job done with the correct hand tools. Now, at this point, I'm going to hand you over to one of our guys in the shop. They're going to show you a step-by-step -step breakdown of how to get these onto your RAM at home. So that wraps it up for me. Let's go ahead and get into the install. Tools required for this install include an impact gun, a ratchet, a hammer, a 21 millimeter wrench, a 15 millimeter ratcheting wrench, a 15 16 wrench, a pry bar, a 10, 16, 18, 21, and 22 millimeter sockets, a couple of bungee cords, as well as a jack and a couple of jack stands. What's up guys? Today we're gonna to be installing a leveling kit on our Ram 1500, so let's get right to it. So first things first guys, after we get the truck up in the air, we have to remove our front wheels. So we'll take a 22 millimeter socket and our locking lug nut key and take our wheels off. Now we can do that same thing on the other side. So now once we have our wheel removed and access to our fender well, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect this ABS line. There's a clip that holds it into our brake line. So you can pull on that, open that clip and pop right out. And then we can follow our line up and there's another connection here on the upper control arm that we can wiggle free. So now that we have our first two clips disconnected, we can follow our ABS line down and it's clipped into the spindle as well. So we can just pull this one right out. So our next step is gonna to be to remove our tie rod end. So it's gonna be a 21 millimeter nut here. We can get a 21 millimeter socket for it. And then we can take a hammer right here to this piece to free up our ball joint. Leave that nut threaded on just a couple threads until we hit it out. And then we can fully remove our nut and disconnect our tie rod. So now we can come to our lower strut bolt. This is going to be a 21 millimeter, and there's also a 15 16 nut on the back. So we'll get a 15 16th wrench. 
on the back side. And then we can get our 21 millimeter socket and get this bolt out. So then we can run out this bolt with our 21 millimeter gun. If that doesn't work, we can jack up on the bottom of the spindle and it will give us that clearance to get it out. So now with our hub jacked up, we can go ahead and wiggle out our bolt. And this one's still a little stuck, so I'm gonna give it one more tap with the gun. So our next step is gonna be to disconnect our sway bar end link from our lower control arm. So it's gonna be right at the bottom here. It's an 18 millimeter nut. So we can get an 18 millimeter socket on that and remove it. So once we have our sway bar end link disconnected, our next step is going to be to disconnect our upper control arm from our spindle. So it's held on by a 21 millimeter nut. But as soon as we disconnect that nut, our whole spindle is going to be able to fall down. So we want to support that weight with the jack stand. And then our whole hub is able to slide side to side right now. So I'm going to go ahead and take our tie rod, slide it back into place, and just put our nut on a couple threads. Now with everything held into position, we can go ahead and disconnect our nut. So now we can get in there with a 21 millimeter ratcheting wrench. And we're gonna leave our nut threaded on a couple threads so that we can get in there with a hammer. We're gonna hit the side of the spindle so that our ball joint releases. So now we can take our hammer and give the top of our spindle a couple taps. Now we can take out our tie rod end again. So now we can go ahead and fully remove the nut that's holding our upper control arm to our spindle. Now a very common thing with ball joints is the whole stud likes to spin when you go to remove the nut. So we can get our 21 millimeter ratcheting wrench on top and a 10 millimeter socket on the bottom. And that'll make sure our stud doesn't spin. So we've gone ahead and put a bungee cord onto our spindle just to better hold it into place while we remove our strut. So then we can come up to the top and we have three 16 millimeter nuts that we can get a 16 millimeter ratcheting wrench on and remove those. So now with our top nuts removed, we can go ahead and get a pry bar on our lower control arm. Okay. 
So now that we have our factory strut removed, we can go ahead and install our new one. So we'll slide it up into place, get our nuts started, slide it into place on the bottom, and then get everything tightened down. Now I've got some bungee cords here just to keep the spindle in place so it doesn't fall forward while we're putting our strut in. So now we can go ahead and take a pry bar and stick it through the hole in the lower control arm. And we can pry down on this, slide our strut into place, and get our hardware started. So now we can reinstall our 15 16 nut on the back side of our lower strut bolt here. And then we can grab a 15 16 wrench on the nut side and a 21 millimeter socket on our bolt head side. Now we can install the rest of our 15 millimeter nuts at the top of our strut. And then we can come in with a 15 millimeter ratcheting wrench and snug these up. So now we can reinstall our upper control arm into our spindle. We'll get our nut on the back side and then we can tighten that down with a 21 millimeter socket. So now that we got our nut on, we can go ahead and take our 21 millimeter ratcheting wrench and snug this down. And now if your ball joint starts spinning at the top like ours is, we can go ahead and put our ratcheting wrench on and then get a 10 millimeter socket on the bottom here. So now that our hub is fully supported, we can go ahead and remove our bungee cords. And then next we're gonna to wanna to jack up on the lower control arm so that we can push down our sway bar end link, get the nut on the back and tighten that down. Now we can reconnect our sway bar end link to our lower control arm by reinstalling our factory 18 millimeter nut. Thread that on, and then we can snug it up with an 18 millimeter socket. So now we can go ahead and reconnect our tie rod. Slide that in, and then reinstall our 21 millimeter nut on the back side. And then we'll take a 21 millimeter socket, snug this down. So now lastly, we can reconnect our ABS line into our upper control arm and around our brake line.
And lastly, we'll put our last grommet into our S-clip behind the spindle. And then we can go ahead and repeat that same process on the other side. So that'll wrap up this review and install of the Rough Country 2-inch front leveling N3 shocks for your 19 to current Ram 1500, excluding the TRX. Thank you for watching, and remember for all things Ram, keep it right here at americantrucks.com.